Before we talk Southampton, can we just clarify Ben Gibson's situation? Because he's mm -hmm. obviously had a bit of publicity overnight. I know we spoke on deadline day and about his frustration at not being able to get a move and there were the, the loan bids from Watford that all failed. Um, why has he gone back to Middlesbrough? It's just a, a situation that builds off the back of the club statement. You know, it's quite a unique one for me, a quite unique situation, and um, one that there's a private angle to it, which will remain private. Um, but at this time, he's with Middlesbrough training there to keep fit and stay sharp. He's still a Burnley player, though, um, still contracted to Burnley. And still being paid by Burnley, I guess, as well. I presume so. I don't know, but I would imagine so. How frustrating is that for you as a manager? Because every player that comes here from Championship gets developed into a Premier League player. Ben's situation just doesn't seem to have developed like that. No, I don't. I think there's a reality to everyone's journey in football. Um, some work like hand in glove, some need work, some take time. And, you know, not every player can play. You can only pick 11 players, um, you know, and, and it's tough. You know, we've got good players here en masse, I believe. And we've certainly got and had previously very good centre-halves, of which he's won, but he couldn't find a way into the team. And then frustration can build out the back end of that. But he's been unlucky with injuries, I suppose it's fair to say that as well. Yeah, I think I think that is something that none of us can control. That is the hard side of being a footballer. I had enough in my career. It is the, the most, actually that is the most frustrating time for a footballer, uh, generally, is injuries. Um, they can't be, well, sometimes they can be possibly helped with good strength and conditioning and prehab, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But generally, if someone gets injured, you can't do much about that. Will there be a hope that he can resurrect his career? By, by we'll see, time? we'll see. See what time, you know, only time will tell. Do you envisage him playing for Burnley again? Let, yet again, we'll see. Um, the, you know, the, the, it's in it's in one of them situations where we'll wait and see what the next step is um, for us as a club, but equally for him as a player. And in terms of the game this weekend, um, two teams on 31 points. Um, you've got a nice bit of momentum going. How, how much would you want to carry on with that? No, not at all. We couldn't be bothered with the momentum. We'll just leave it. Um, <laughs> No, of course, it's, um, no, joking apart, of course, it's, it's nice to gain some momentum. It is, there's no two ways about it. It does help. I think it helps with mentality. I think the mentality has been strong because we did um, hit a period of, of a tough run of results. Um, I said then, I, I think the margins are tight. They often are for us. And a, 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 a shift in performance level um, and some very good performances, particularly against Leicester, um, individual performances got us that one and then I thought we were very good at Man U and deserved that one and then I thought we probably deserved a little bit more out of the Arsenal game um, although the pitch was ever so long at 26 mil um, but it's, um, it's one of them things that um, you know it's I think it does it does aid your group it doesn't it doesn't um, guarantee the next one not remotely but I think it just helps bring that that inner confidence back to the fore, which sometimes, if you're on a bad run, just, you know, people get a little bit tight with everything. Um, so I think it does help with that. But Southampton, I think they're a good... I always thought they were a good side, by the way, even early season, it wasn't going for them. Um, I think from the outside looking in anyway, I think it's a strange one. You know, the, the, the fact they had a real tough night and, and, you know, got a lot put past them seems to have galvanised their group and... Um, that might be manager-led, it might be player-led, it might be both, you know, where they've all agreed. And since then, I think it seems to me the most obvious things, um, change of tactical formation to a 4-4-2, um, the, roughly speaking, flexible 4-4-2, but a 4-4-2, and I think getting the ball forward a bit quicker and, and definitely a shift in energy. Um, it seems like they're pressing harder, faster, um, and, and, and sort of creating a, a sort of fervour to their performances. That's what it seems like uh, from the outside looking in. In balance to that, of course, they've had some good results, but equally over the last four games, I think they conceded 11 goals. So, you know, I don't, I don't think they're, well, like a lot of us, you know, we're, we're all challenging for that run of games. We all want clean sheets. We all want to score goals. We want to win games. And I think they're just another of a clutch of teams are all putting the effort in and all putting the hard yards in and, and trying to make the best season they can. I'm impressed to have been with Danny Ings because he seems to be finding some wonderful form. Yeah, season. he's done well, Ings. I mean, uh, you know, we, we watched him from afar once he left us, but the work that, you know, the staff did here with him and, and medical staff first, because well, he did have some ups and downs. Very unfortunate, by the way, even to now and apart from recently, and some real tough injuries and, and, you know, great mentality to come through them. The work here that was put into him and the strength and conditioning, the, the alignment with what he needs as a player, I think, all round from the coaching staff. I think that's been important in giving him a base to work from. And then he got a move, obviously, and a deserved move, by the way. Um, and then it was just really unfortunate. You know, he never quite got the run of fitness and games that he could uh, probably need at Liverpool. And he's gone down to Southampton, had his first spell, a little bit like that, a little bit up and down with injuries, but then has, has really found his fitness and his form, and he's playing very, very well. But it's not a... 
It's not a massive surprise to me once he got over his injuries because he's a good player. There's no two ways about it. How does it work that with a, with a former player? Do your lads this weekend just look forward and can't wait to face him? I don't think there's any. He's been gone a long time. I don't think there's anything other than a, a you know a shake of the hand or now probably a shoulder bump. Um, in my day, it's shake the hands like I tend to do. Um, but yeah, and just a chat and get on with it. But he's been gone quite a while now. So I think he's still got a couple of links here, but, but generally it's been quite a while now. How are we looking injury-wise, in particular with Ashley Barnes and uh, Johan? Yeah, so Barnes is doing well. He's back on the grass with the physios. He's not with us training yet, um, but that's progressing as we would expect it to. And he's really, I've just spoke to him, actually. He's, he's happy in himself, um, so that's good. Uh, Johan, we're giving him an extra period on the grass training with us um, just to try and balance everything out a little bit because he'd re-injured the same injury, only uh, nowhere near the same level, quite obviously. But we've got to be careful with that. This is a bugbear of the, the staffs and, and players, you know, if you re-injure because you're always thinking come back once, not twice as I call it, you know, and, and he's been unfortunate with that. So we're just giving an extended period, but he's, he's looking good and he's trying very well this week. Uh, Matt Loughton took a, a knock of a sort of a pretty heavy knock of knees against Arsenal um, and that's left a bit of swelling in his knees. So he's, um, we, we'll make a call on that, I think, tomorrow. That's more 50-50. And Charlie Taz had a very minor niggly hamstring, so we'll wait on that. But I think that's more positive. Um, so we'll, we'll think he'll be on the grass tomorrow because um, he was today. So as long as there's no reaction, then we'd expect him to be fit. Everyone else is, is, is good after the break. Jack was telling us that Josh Brownell seems to have settled in really, really well. I mean, um, I know he didn't feature against Arsenal, but any chance he might feature this weekend? I, I think he'll certainly be uh, travelling with us and in amongst the group. He's... Uh, we like what we're seeing early early on. I mean, the group here are fantastic. They accept people in. They accept people who want to challenge as well. Um, as you said, in Corky, you know, a very, very uh, good player and a great servant to us. But he, he'll accept the challenge of a new player coming in, new midfield player coming in. And then the Arsenal, I know I said afterwards, but just to clarify, you know, he just got in the building. And there's nothing other than that. He's now had a period to work with the players. He's beginning to adapt to what it is. And the pace of training, we demand a lot of the players here in, on the training pitch. And I think he's adapting to that. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what he can deliver over time. But it, but he certainly slipped into the group quite nicely. Do you have to be very careful when you put him in? Because you have a certain way of training here. You have a certain way of playing. You've got to be 100% sure that he's ready. We test players when they come in. So we've got a, a background. He has been playing regularly. He's played a lot of football over the last couple of couple of three seasons. So, um, yeah, but we do test them, make sure they're, they're somewhere in where we think they should be, um, which he was. And then we look for the training schedule and, and what we can deliver here to help them get sharper. And their own demands, of course. We like we like the trust in players to bring their own demands. We we do all the normal stuff now, GPS and everything. But often we're looking at the players with their eyes and thinking, are they are they on it? Are they working hard? Have they got that edge to their performances in training? Um, you know, I think we've as mentioned it many times. Automis, uh, automaticity, if it's easy for me to say, but the idea is get that automatic response. So when you're out there playing, you don't need to search for it; it's there. So that's why we train how we do. Um, we want the players to deliver it on the training pitch for their uh, for them to be ready to go and deliver when the the real stuff starts. And everybody seems to think it's still anybody from in the bottom ten really that might be at risk of going down. What, what's your assessment? My assessment is I couldn't care about the others. Um, I really do care about ourselves. Um, we've got a lot of work to do, but I think we're showing good signs. I think we've, we've come out of a tough period, but everyone, or most, not everyone actually, but there's a lot of teams who have tough spells in the, the Premier League. Um, and I think we've, you know, we've been a bit unfortunate with a couple and a couple we haven't done well enough in. But, but when we find the balance of play, I think we can be competitive and I think we've shown that. Hey, Sean. Um, when you approach for these sorts of matches, like the one at the weekend, do you look at the performances against Leicester, Manchester United and Arsenal or do you actually look at the, the wins against the Watfords and the Bournemouths from earlier on in the season? Which is it for you? No, we really look at the balance, you know, how we're performing. And by the way, it's not just the wins. You look at all the games, you know, how you're performing. We, we debrief when we think it's necessary. We pre-brief the team for the next performance. Um, you take the positives. You have to look at some of the things that didn't go as well. Share them with the players, get some feedback and keep moving forward. But the... The, the anal uh, analytics side of being a manager and the, and the coach as well, by the way, um, other than the pure analytics through the, the actual analyst team is a constant. You know, we're always looking and the margins and the, the details that need to be um, certainly put in place and delivered to get results. You know, and we often are on their margins, the real tight games and tight results. Um, so we've got to make sure we get them right. So it's a, it's a work in progress constantly for us. You said the performance against Arsenal was the best all-round performance from your side this season. 
how difficult is it to replicate those sorts of performances when perhaps you're going on a long away trip um, against the side in the bottom half of the table? Um, I'm not so sure about the long away trip, although the wind might be a bit hairy, I think, uh, it seems. Um, but no, I mean, I think nowadays you travel right, you prepare right. Uh, there's, statistically, there's a home edge to most teams uh, in the Premier League. Um, but no, I, th I think it's more about just being in the right frame of mind. We, we know they'll be physically right. Um, we've, we've shown that we can be strong physically in second half of seasons, not necessarily just results, but actually the, the actual facts and the stats of what we do. Um, so I think the players are, are well prepared for the second uh, part of the season. Well, well, we're into it now, the second part of the season. But um, yeah, I mean, we go down there open-minded, but ready to play. And I think that's an important factor. Just ask you about Jay. He's <coughs> had happy memories <coughs> at Southampton. Would you say that he's showing his best form of the season for you? I think to be fair to Jay, it's not that he wasn't showing form, it's just that that real true sharpness comes. You know, if you're playing more regularly, you know, all the fitness work you can do is never the same as them real performances. And, and I think he's beginning to show that, his sharpness, his sharp edge, his eyes getting in and in, if you like, and clearer, we're seeing the picture. His connection with his teammates, you know, they all grow over time. And I, I did mention that earlier, I mentioned it to him as well when he signed here. You know, people were talking about Alphans play with Barnes and Wood, but they've been here a while now playing together. So them connections, you know, when you play two up front particularly, they have to reform or, or begin to form. And I think there's, there's strong signs of that. Um, you know, and I think that's a, a, good, a good thing to have for the team is that his eye is getting in and he is getting sharper without doubt. I know you always say it's about looking at the table at the end of this season, but of course three points at the weekend would take you one step closer to safety. Is that now the main source of motivation? For the game? No, to be honest, we've never shied away from the truth and the facts are for a club like this with the, the finan uh, financial model we're under, you know, is that the, the first port of call is continuing the journey in the Premier League. That, that's that's just a fact. It's not about um, positives or negatives. That's a fact. How you know can that journey continue? Can it continue in a sense that we are building and we are moving forward? That's the tough part because we are, I think, with the team. But the the, the financial model of so many times needs stretching because that's the market. Um, but no, I mean, I, I think it's one of them. We, we all know where we live in the market. And I think uh, the first port of call is get as many points on the table. And, and usually, not always, but usually around that 40 mark is a key figure. Anything above that is what you're searching for, really. So we are open-minded about that. And the bigger picture thing for me is try and move on season after season. You know, it's fair to say that last season was tough. We'd finished seventh the season before. So it's tough for a club like Burnley to, to finish above seventh. Um, so that's probably measured slightly differently. But can we go and get stronger this year than we were last year? Can we go and get more points on the board? And if we are doing that, can we also perform better? And I think they're the margins that we're also constantly looking for season after season that we are in the Premier League can we keep adding and keep just building the team how it works how it operates and of course the league table can we keep going places up the league table Afternoon Sean just, okay. just a couple more on, on, on Ben how did that sort of situation manifest itself where he's ended up at Middlesbrough was it something that you approached Middlesbrough about or No no there was a few stories out there it wasn't like that um, it was just a situation that arose um, from from out of our situation. So we talked it through and then the decision was made. Is there an, an element of that's where he's from as well, like a case to go perhaps back to no. where, he, where he knows and clear his head a little bit in that sense? Or? No. No. Um, and we've spoken to Ben a couple of times in here and everyone who's sort of worked with him and dealt with him in the past has been very positive about his attitude and, and his professionalism. And I think you, you have been as well mm -hmm. previously. Is that... Have you seen a sort of drop off in that in the last few weeks that's led to this? No, there's just a situation where, you know, players um, want one thing and that doesn't always work. It's just the way it goes. And like I say, it's quite a unique situation. So um, the club put a statement out. I'm happy with that statement. The, you know, the, the, any more details than that will be kept private, as we like to do. You know, we like to do our business in private, not just about our own players, about other players we're linked with. Um, the the 43,000 we got linked with recently. Um, the loads of them came in, as you'll know. Um, so, you know, I think it's, it's one of them situations that will remain private until we choose that it's not private. Is there a time scale on when he might be, be back here, if at no. all? Just a case of, of wait and see and go from Yeah, there. he's a Burnley player. He's a contracted Burnley player. Um, and what, how difficult has that been for, for you, this situation, to manage in general? Because you said that it's a pretty unique... No, not overly difficult. It's just a unique situation. It's part of what I do. Um, you know, I've been in management long enough now 
to know that there are things that occur and situations that occur that need managing one way or the other. And I think as a collective, the, the club have, you know, handled this situation and managed it um, to our, certainly to the, the situation that we think is appropriate. And has it had any impact at all on any of the players, the sort of mentality no. in the group or anything like that? No. It's not become a talking point around the training ground and things like that? No. Um, okay, on to the football. Um, <laughs> we've talked briefly about Josh then as well. He's obviously had a, a few days training now. What's your sort of first impressions of him been as a, as a player and as a person? He's come in, he's adapted to the challenge pretty quickly. Um, but he's been playing regularly, don't forget. So, you know, he's pretty much his fitness levels are decent. Um, I think the sharpness, funny enough, I spoke to him today, not at any length, just, you know, you're finding it and that sort of thing. He said, yeah, I definitely know it's the sharpness in training. Um, the, the, you know, the, the difference of the feel of the training schedule. Um, and, and he's waiting for his chance to obviously operate in a game. Um, but no, I think, I think he'll grow into the club, which we often look for. You know, we don't, it's not very often we've signed players who we think are just bona fide Premier League players, love them on the pitch and they take care of themselves. We've often had to work with the players and I think he's another one that we will do. And I think he's another one that the group will rub off on him and how we work will rub off on him. And I think so far he's enjoying it. I mean, he's only been here 10 days, but he's enjoying it. And I guess he can look at people like Charlie Taylor and, and Nick Pope as, as players who you've mentioned then he perhaps didn't arrive as, as bona fide Premier League players and take inspiration from, from where they are now. I think he certainly would be aware that, you know, behind the this many stories of Burnley and what we do and the play and how we play and all of that, I think there will be a moment of, of his certainly understanding of the fact that there's a lot of players who have developed nicely here and, and enjoyed their time here and either been very successful here or gone on to different situations, has been successful again. So I think, I think he'll have an understanding of that, but I don't think that was his pure motive or anything to be here. I think his motive is to play in the Premier League and I think that's what he wants to do. I think he'll, he'll certainly have a hunger and desire to do that. Um, and I think there's a balance to him as a character, you know, being a captain, I think, at a pretty young age, I think that usually shows a sign of what the managers think and the coaches think at their previous club, um, that they trust him to deliver on a consistent level. Now his challenge is to get in this team and then deliver on a consistent level in the Premier League. And from your point of view, just and this isn't just about Josh or, or Ben, but how fine a line is it between allowing players the opportunity to, to play, um, whether it be in a cup game or a league game, and being loyal to the players who've done so well for you over the last two That's years? That's often a challenge. Years. You know, like I say, you can only play 11. Um, we speak about it every pre-season. So, lads, there has to be that feeling and understanding. They know, by the way, we just sort of remind them. You know, that is the job. It's is get the shirt. If you can't get the shirt, get one on the bench. And if you can't get one on the bench, work so hard and so be so good that we have to make a decision and put you on the bench or in the team. And I think, I know it's not quite as, as literal as that, but that is the thinking. That's the logic of it. So the training ground is where they have their opportunity to really... No, and games as well. Obviously, the games, we take them serious here when we have... You know, the, the word, which I'm not always that keen on, I understand it's just a word, but the bounce games, as they call them, um, I used to, you know, I think they are competitive here. I think we've got a competitive group when, they, when the, the group play, and I think he will use that wisely if and when we decide to play him in them games, of course, which we will do just to get his eye in. Um, but I've certainly brought him here with the thinking that he's going to push to play, that's for sure. And all players, of course. Thank you. Thank you.